Good afternoon. Welcome back to the BH Virtual Event Space. You're tuned in to the Passion of Photographer Critiques, hosted by Lassie. So a huge thank you to them for hosting this ongoing series where we look at your images. So before I turn it over to the Passion of Photographer himself, Mr. Steve Simon, I'll let you guys know, get these images in. This is going to be an ongoing series. So send as many images in as you like. Of course, you know, we do have a, a little bit of a limit, but uh, I, I know in the past we've said three images max, but look, the more the merrier. We try to get through as many as we can, and uh, it takes your engagement to keep this an ongoing series. So a huge thank you to everybody who has been participating in this for as long as we've been doing it. And with Steve, that's been quite some time. Steve, what's going on? Welcome. It's uh, great to be back. Uh, thank you, Derek. And uh, yeah, people have been submitting. We've gotten a lot of uh, great images. And I know, you know, we're maybe not getting through as many as we would like each week, but you know, it's not always a, a quantity thing. Uh, we really want to speak to uh, the images that are there in a way that I think, uh, you know, people can use. Uh, and so that's what we're we're trying to do. But uh, it's good to be back. Uh, everything good with you? Everything's great. Great. Got out awesome. to the, uh, the Lunar New Year parade. First time I've been out with the intent to actually photograph rather than just having my camera on me. So it felt good. How's everything on oh. your side? Uh, everything's good. Now, good. I know that uh, you have a young son and you took him to the parade. And let me ask you this. So how do you photograph and deal with your wife and your son at the same time? I always think that, you know, you have to be kind of that lone wolf or else you'll be a little bit distracted. Uh, do you feel that when you're, oh, you're totally. out with family? Totally. Yeah. And they would be posted up. The, the great thing about the Lunar New Year parade in New York is it's not like a typical parade in New York where you're stuck and you're afraid to move because it's like cattle being herded. There's plenty of space to move down the sidewalks along the parade route. Plenty of spots along the parade route that have great energy, but still enough room to kind of just post up and wander. So we wandered along the parade route. At times, I kind of did my own thing. And my son, of course, always wants to be right next to me. He had his camera. So... <laughs> It'd be good. We'd post up there on the railing. There's only so many shots you can get. And I kind of, when you go out with the family, you have to be resigned to the fact that I'm not going to be able to go off the beaten path and get the, the different shots. So I tried to make what shots I could do on the parade route as unique as possible. Yeah, I know. I, I get in the moment sometimes. I'm actually surprised you, you found your son and your wife uh, after shooting. Because once you get kind of in the moment, uh, it's a little bit distracting. Uh, but we'll have to. How old is your son? Seven. Just turned seven. He's seven. And, and what camera was he using? He's using an old Fujifilm point and shoot underwater bright orange camera. Oh. Vintage, vintage stuff over here. Well, well, we'll have to get a father and son picture uh, together for one of our critiques. And my son's Definitely. a little older. He's nine. Uh, but we'll we'll have to do that one day. We'll oh, there we go. We got to do a father son street outing. Absolutely. That would awesome. Be great. And critique. Well, well, listen, it's great to be back. Uh, and as always, uh, I like to talk a little bit before we get into the critique uh, about, you know, some of the things that we'll be speaking to and obviously composition and framing. Um, I really think that, you know, composition is not really finished till the post-process, you know, especially if you're doing sort of street and travel work, mainly because, um, you know, you want to sort of capture the scene. And of course, when things are wildly out of your control, as you experienced at that parade, you know, you can't necessarily keep tabs on everything within the frame, but obviously you're attracted to sort of core, you know, action and situations. But then when you look at the images and you go, oh, okay, uh, maybe it's a little off center. Maybe there's something a little distracting. So <clears throat> what I love about having, you know, a few megapixels and the ability to crop is, I can finish my composition and framing in post before I sort of let it out into the world. And, uh, you know, particularly, you know, it's a little bit different when you've got your tripod and you're doing landscape work where you can really be more deliberate in terms of the composition. Um, do you do a lot of cropping in post, uh, Derek, or do you live with what you get? Oh, I think you're, you're muted. I didn't want you guys to hear me slurping coffee over here. Uh, I usually <laughs> do. I'm a, I'm a big, big cropper because I like to shoot a little wider and I shoot primes. So it's just in the nature of the beast. And a lot of times, especially lately, I've been shooting a lot with the GFX 100 S, which is hundred megapixels. So I have the ability to crop down and kind of 
it's nice for me to get a whole scene in case I want it, but then I know I have the latitude to crop down. So I do heavy bit of cropping. Yeah, you know, and and you know, sometimes we're going to be looking at work and we're going to be thinking, oh, maybe it'd be better with a crop as as often as it can. You know, here's an example where you know this is kind of a dead center kind of image. You know, the image is cut in half at the horizon. The woman is pretty much in the center of the frame, and these are kind of uh, you know rules or guides that that need to be broken. But that said. I think it works in this particular case, and I don't think necessarily the rule of thirds is going to improve this image. So, you know, the idea of the guides are there to help us because they work in probably a majority of situations, but having the ability to crop like an image like this to an image like this, I think arguably, you know, this is a stronger image than this one. So, you know, we're always going to be talking about that. And then there's the idea of originality. And, you know, I, I love Henri Cartier-Bresson on so many levels, but he was a great articulator about photography. If you read some of his written work, um, and he talked about this back in the day, you know, there are no new ideas in the world, just a re-examining. And, you know, it's true that uh, there are certain places uh, where there's a lot of action going on. But these parades have happened before. We go to Coney Island because it's just a great place to shoot. But so many photographers have been there before. But you're going to sort of bring your own spin to to things. And I think, you know, that is the key is to find a, a way to get personal about what you want to record with your camera and communicate with the world. Um, anything to add to that, Derek? No, I think you summed it up. Okay, good, good. All right, let's get to it. Um, and here is our first, uh, image and I don't know about you, but I oftentimes, uh, will shoot inside a museum or a gallery. Um, and let's, let's face it, you know, the gallery is designed, uh, to show off the works of art in it. It's obviously kind of a minimalist kind of a place. And for photography and for the less is more mantra that we're often uh, talking about here, it's a great place to shoot. And, uh, you know, in this particular case, um, you know, it's simple, um, but I like a lot about what's going on in this image. Um, I love the space, of course, and I love the composition because the photographer has given the space, the space within the frame to make this image work. I love even the body language of him sitting right on the edge there with his legs and all the diagonals and so on and so forth. You know, the different layers of where the images are, the dark on top and the wood on the bottom. Um, and even the spaced out area of the humans that are inhabiting and, and looking at what looks to be a really... Uh, interesting uh, photographic exhibit um i wonder is this uh is this icp no i don't think so i think it's a it's a big local gallery and then there's the micro composition of this guy now there's something a little weird going on with the uh face here and the post processing but we'll ignore that for now even the micro composition it's pretty good i would have loved to have maybe had a little space here but that's you know not a deal breaker but i think i think it works on on different levels uh thoughts derek I think you nailed everything. I'd be beating a dead horse if I if I okay. said anything on yeah. this. I re really it, like it. it. Everything everything frames up nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the beauty of uh, the critiques here is that we get different uh, points of view from from us and our baggage that we take with us when we uh, go out with our cameras. But oftentimes, uh, we are in agreement. Um, now, there these three images that I thought were particularly strong, and it really seems to have the finger or thumbprint of a certain photographer and their vision. And you can sort of see it in the way this thing is composed. The fact that there are sort of two things happening at the same time. And this kind of vision that the photographer has, and I, I don't know for sure because we don't always know um, uh, in the, in the metadata here, there's no information. So I don't know, but I would have to guess that that's kind of what's happening here, that it may be the same photographer. So we've got this image and we've got this image and then we have this image. So let's start with this one. Just because when I first saw it, I thought to myself, 
is that actually one picture or did they somehow combine these two images? It's almost too perfect and too different in order for this image to kind of exist. But I tend to think that it is one image and it's just very well done and is often the case, you know, and I know Derek feels the same way. You find your kind of main subject and then you go to work waiting as we've spoken to, I think even last week we talked about this. Um, but you know, what's really interesting here is the, these two images in many ways cannot be more diverse in terms of the lighting. Uh, in terms of the architecture, it's kind of similar, but the tonal range, the sort of cool and the warm, um, it's it's pretty amazing. I love it. And, and again, we talk about it all the time, images that make us think and make us look at it and try to figure it out in a good way. It's good, mysterious. Um, this I is think, Hudson Yards, as I this Hudson I Yards, realized. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. But I want to find all, this spot and steal it. It's all the all the bags. If you go right up on, is it? 30 oh yeah, second. It's that I, entrance I, I right. I know where that is, but this particular moment or this place where the photographer yeah. aimed the this, camera at. If you that walk I'm not by sure and then you go to the right is the vessel. So it's if you come up, it's right on the left side of the mall, the south side of the mall. Um, yeah, I know right where it is, and I'm sitting there and I'm like. This is one of those, I don't even care if it's two images spliced together. If it's two <laughs> images spliced together, yeah, well done. Enough. It works great and it's awesome. And I and I love the eye. I am 99% sure I know who took the photo and it makes perfect sense. And that photographer, the photographer I'm thinking of has a style, a very recognizable style and has a wonderful eye and just always pushes the limits. So this is very on par for the way the person that I'm, think it is um sees the world and i just think it's awesome I, th I think the beauty of photography is getting to see how other photographers see and when you shoot street as steve and i do you really appreciate how rare these moments are there's there's such a saturation of street photography out there now but really good street photography street photography that's intentional and that captures these little moments like this are so few and far between you have to spend hours and hours and hours and days and weeks and months to get images where you just happen to have everything come together at the right moment like that the often talked about uh decisive moment but yeah these are these are great the, yeah. the light work and the mm -hmm. the patience in these images so beautifully done the composition amazing yeah really and and i guess if you look at these two images in particular but the other one as well um, one of the sort of secrets to the success of the photographer that made them, assuming it's the same photographer, is the light. And they tend to shoot at a very specific time when the light is sort of harsh and contrasty and <clears throat> the light and shadow differences are, are great so that there really is no detail in the shadows, but it creates a very kind of impactful kind of image. And, and then there's the composition. I mean, you know, beautiful. The, the shadow of the woman in the front and the guy there. I mean, there's a lot to be said about that. Mm -hmm. The simplicity in terms of the color. Uh, the color really is amplifying the content here. You've heard us say this before. Um, and that's what good color does. But, uh, you know, yeah. the, the hand and the hand. I mean, they're, 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 we're setting a pretty high bar to begin with, I have to admit, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of this critique. Um, but they're, they're amazing images. Yeah. And it's a perfect example. You don't need incredible moments per se. This is a sum of its parts. Like you said, the color, the composition, the, the light, the framing, the breathing room in the image, there's so much breathing room in here. This is just a really good eye taking everyday mundane moments and making them incredibly interesting to look at. Simplicity, simplicity, yeah. um, and, and look at the ingredients. So, you know, what are we learning from these images? Let's go out at sort of the golden sort of great light time, you know, for that hour and a half or whatever it is, if we're shooting color, let's look for places where there is that sort of light and dark, that, that sort of, you know, big brightness range, so that when you expose the kid or the man, everything else goes dark and anything in the sunlight is going to be there. And, and see what you get. You know, you'll never get exactly what the other guy get, and what the other guy got, and you're going to get something unique, and it may be something that will work for you. 
So yeah. it's is worth it. And, and Steve, if I can just for for a second, you know, Steve does workshops. There's a lot of street photographers that do workshops. Even street photographers, invest in yourselves. Go out with somebody who sees these things, who sees the light. Good friend of mine is Phil Penman, who sees light better than anybody I've ever gone out and photographed with. We'll walk by areas and he'll take note of light and be like, okay, this corner facing this way at this time, the moment's not right right now. I don't really see anything going on, but I'm going to come back here and makes a mental note of it. And I think, you know, Steve, you, you offer workshops all the time and this is a great opportunity for people to go out and just learn to see the world in a different way. Absolutely. And when you take, take a mental note, well, my mental notebook is not as good as my physical notebook. So I'm going to forget, you know, it's like a dream, you know, wake up and, oh, I wish I remembered or a song lyric, not that I'm a, a singer songwriter, although I'd love to be, I wish I had the talent, but yeah, mark it down, mark it down. You can mark it down in the notebook on your electronic device, or you can do old fashioned moleskin paper notebook, but have that photo uh, book that is there for inspiration for, for jotting down notes keep track and even, you know, not only the date and the time, but the time of year, uh, cause you're going to come back if you live in a place and, and that, and that's just smart. And that will bring you back to places that you can create five-star images. So, you know, people talk about, I got lucky. Um, I don't really agree with that because every time we go out, our goal is to make that fantastic image. I think that most of the time we're not lucky because we're not getting those images, but when we get it, um, you know, that's what we went out to do, but the ratio of good to great is very high and it takes a lot of time and shots to get out there to, uh, to get these kinds of images. But when you put the odds in your favor by doing what this photographer does, by going out in a certain way, looking for certain subjects, you can learn this and then you can ultimately, uh, put your design and compositional talent to it. Okay. Well, um, another kind of simple kind of an image, um, but really kind of interesting. I think um, the processing of this uh, works. Uh, obviously, the genetic control uh, graffiti that's on this space is kind of unfortunate. I and mean, I hate to see sort of graffiti, you know, applied to a place that, you know, doesn't really need it. Uh, but since it was there, and assuming it's uh, not uh, the photographer that that wrote that, um, it's kind of interesting. And and then when you have this particular subject, uh, even though it's small in the frame, taking up very little real uh, real estate in terms of the image, uh, look at the sort of resigned and defeated body language, and it really does fit the idea of genetic control. Now. I might be a Spanish photographer and I look at this and, you know, I'm not going to understand what that is. I still might appreciate this image, but sometimes words and pictures together, especially when you understand what those words are, combine to make something even stronger. Um, but I think it works. Yeah, definitely. Um, even, even the little distortion, the little pole here of that angle of shooting a little wider, camera angled a little up, I think it works here. And, and I'm always the first one to be like straight in the lines and do this and do that. Um, I think, I don't know if it goes as far as having some metaphorical meaning, but that's how we look at things. We're, we're taught to look at every little intentional decision as something that plays into to how we see imagery. And uh, I like it here. Yeah. And, you know, again, look at the composition of these images. It's, it's very sort of simple um, yet very, very effective. And, you know, this image almost has kind of an infrared uh, kind of feel to it. Uh, um, regardless, though, you know, the bottom line is, you know, does an image work? Um, and an image like this, I think, really does. And it makes me want to see more of the photographer. I wonder if, um, you know, the photographer can repeat this magic, you know, in, in other images, or is it a bit of a one-off? But it's interesting to see. And when you get an image like this, it may allow you to sort of put in your notebook, hey, I'm going to do a little story on sort of words and graffiti that I find and then maybe combine it with something interesting. I mean, these are not easy things to find necessarily, but as you explore the world and the more you shoot, the luckier you get, even though I claimed it's not really luck. 
um, you know, you're going to sort of get images like this, which eventually you kind of put together in a collection in Lightroom. And then you've got kind of a gallery show slash book in the making. So, you know, one of the things I know we often harp on is the idea of your image does not work necessarily in isolation, although it can, but this is a body of work that you're creating. And there are a lot of connections there that are happening. And when you connect those dots, you can create a series of images that the sum is much greater than the parts. You're firing today. All cylinders. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, again, I think there, there are some similarities, uh, yet obviously big differences. So you can look at these two images and go, okay, well, similarly, they're, they're kind of high, high key. And we say high key when there's a lot of sort of light tones or white tones in it. Uh, they're also very, very simple. Um, they're both very evocative. You know, both of these images um, evoke, for me anyway, um, some ideas about kind of what we're looking at. But then I go beyond the reality of what we're looking at, and I'm sort of feeling something. I feel like it's a little bit of a dream. Now, I'm assuming that this particular image is of a figure skater twirling, perhaps at a slow shutter speed. Um, and we know that when we do this kind of photography, uh, most of the images uh, don't work. They don't come out all that great. Um, this one, I think, works because you get that sort of feel of speed, and then you've got this sublime and calm kind of expression in the face. Um, I would like to see a little bit more on the bottom and more on the top, but I don't know what's there. Um, I think that's not going to hurt it. Uh, but this image in the sort of speed of, of, of what is created by capturing in a slow shutter speed, and this is a quarter of a second, um, this particular image, um, has also captured this very quiet, calm uh, face that... I don't know. What does that make you think when you look at an image like this? It's it's calming. It's pleasant. I think the cut off limbs works because it's even, and they kind of fade into the to these edges. As you're talking, Steve, I'm looking at it and I'm like, why? Like, why do we like an image like this? And you could have a similarly photographed image, and it just might not work. And we're going to get very technical on it. And I think it's just it's that initial. Pop, when you look at an image, do you feel something? You know, there's enough here to go on. There's enough here to feel. There's enough of the expression to see. There's a little pop of color. The the whiteness surrounding, it's even. And a lot of times when composition is pleasing, I think that's the one thing, you know, composition and, and certain light that really can overtake us to the point of, okay, Certain things can slide when you have certain things right. There are certain things that must be there. If your composition is super distracting, it doesn't matter anything else in the image. You're going to be drawn. And I think there's just certain things that our eyes see and recognize and process. And this is one of them. You know, just everything to me just balances here. Yeah. And, and I think kind of what I'm feeling about this image when I zoom in, you can feel the speed in this image, yeah. in this part of the image. There's energy. Sort of, but then there's this sort of serene calmness, and it's really just kind of the magic of photography. Um, I think it's great, and I think it works, and it creates kind of a mood, uh, not unlike an image like this that creates a mood. But, you know, obviously very, very different subject matter, different photographers, different technique, yet there's a similar feel. And again, that's kind of the magic. And that's what I love yeah. about doing this show, Derek, because we get to see everybody's images and, you know, we see what we love about photography and that is the magic aspect of it. Sometimes, you know, when you see what someone does, you realize, ah, oh, okay, accolades to you because, you know, this, this is really working. And I hope that, you know, in some of my images, I can do similar things. Yeah. Well, can we go back that one, one quick second? Cause I just want to yeah, point absolutely. One, one thing out. Um, because it is, is a critique and I always like to throw things out just for argument's sake, or sometimes I think you want to have full options available to choose from being that this is such a dreamy light image. The one suggestion I would maybe want to see is on the processing side. I think it's captured beautifully on the processing side. This might be something where I'd go into my curves tool and take that left 
black anchor and bring it up a little bit and bring it in a little bit just to flat and see how the well actually yeah go back to that image see how the, the blacks the shadows are flattened on this you have a very flat um shadow and i feel like not enough people utilize that flatness in the blacks everyone's so used to pulling all the dynamic range out of their shadows sometimes crushing the shadows and you create that flatter black that draws your because it is your eye is going to go sometimes to the brightest part but sometimes it's going to go to that big black ink stain in the middle of the image and you want it to really travel through I, I you know i want this i want the black to be less distracting so i might take something like this and kind of pull the black up just to make it a little you know maybe slide my black scale down a little bit on there or do like a local adjustment to where that black is more of like a flat you know not so much a gray but just a flatter black that just pulls some of the richness out of it but just a suggestion a very high uh end comment and yeah it's true because when you look at this image there's no doubt uh, the beauty is in sort of the high key effect of things. And, you know, the black is just part of the costume that she's wearing. But you're right, that black is so powerful and so strong and so dominating that if you can soften it up a little or enhance it in such a way, there's no detail there anyway, so it doesn't matter. And I think ultimately that's uh, what's going to make. And I would try and do it, but... You know, it's going to take too long to, for me personally to do it because <laughs> that sounds like a job for you and your enhancement <laughs> uh, skills. But yeah, it's 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 a great image. So so let's continue on. Um, and we've got this image here. And uh, you know, when I saw this image, um, it reminded me very much of the great W. Eugene Smith image, which is uh, "Walk Through Paradise Garden." Um, uh, what are your thoughts on this? I'm going to dig up uh, the walk through Paradise Garden to compare it. Beautiful moment. I think this is an image that some some processing can really take it to another level. I think it was beautifully seen. I would have I would have wanted to see something a little different com compositionally. I think definitely I see a black and white. Um. Yeah, I want a little more, a little less on the bottom, a little more on the top. Um, there's that interesting wave up there where I'm like, you know, at first I was like, wait, what? what is that? It, it kind of gave like this illusion. Then, I, you know, I saw what it was. It's like the landscape, kind of like the horizon there and another tree line behind it. It adds a little depth and layering that I think would yeah. lean into black and white as in the image that you're pulling up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is the famous uh, Eugene Smith image, of course, Walk Through Paradise Garden. Um, you know, the one that uh, very uh, well known, the Family of Man uh, exhibition, it was the closing image, very optimistic, walking into the light. Those were Eugene Smith's actual kids. Um, he's a long and interesting uh, story to talk about. Um, and this one has similar characteristics. You know, you get a sense of uh, uh, maybe a, a mother and a son or a mother and a, a girl. It doesn't really matter. But because they're from behind, you know, they become icons for for this kind of a walk. And, you know, it's it's kind of beautiful. And and the beauty is also in the um, environment. You know, it's a snowstorm. You can see the snow is is all over. It's it's thick and, and going. Um, and it's a great moment. I, I I'm guessing, you know, just because I know how photography works, that maybe this is the dad that, uh, you know, having them walk up a little uh, ahead so he can do the shot, and and I'm glad he did. Um, I think, yeah, it's true. Uh, you probably could uh, enhance it. Uh, let's see it in black and white. Yeah, I think it can work uh, very well in black and white as well. Um, but, you know, in color, uh, color can, can work as well because, you know, you've got that sort of blue light. But you can really play around with the color. There's a lot you can do in the enhancement. Um, from a... a a cropping point of view, I almost want to kind of straighten it out a little bit. So if I straighten it, I think I love these sort of curves and the little line that's going on here. Um, and then maybe uh, a little bit of desaturation. So, you know, you keep it sort of color, but, and, and you can really work on it. It becomes very monochromatic. Um, I wonder too, if there's a way to crop it a little bit. If, I think if, that if, that desaturation helped pull the blues. I think the blue was distracting for me. Those you have the yeah. pops of the the red and are the you know like the pink red, and yeah, I think yeah. light. I like keeping those in that 
just that slight desaturation pulled enough out of the blue to make it not distracting. Yeah, I, I really, um, I, I love the mood of it. From a uh, being uh, sort of the Debbie Downer critique thing, I would have liked if, uh, oops, it's not good. Oh. Um, if the head here was within this line, it's it's a minor, minor thing. And believe me, perfection is overrated and it's not at all a deal breaker. But I, I love the mood and, you know, being a, a dad, uh, there's something also emotional that uh, it, it tugs at um, this sort of walk through life. And uh, you're going to have all kinds of different environments. But, um, you know, an image that can make you think of all these things um, to me is a, is a very successful image. That's what I'm bringing to it. Maybe you won't, but uh, yeah. I like it. I like how you pointed out that out, Steve, because I think it is relevant. It's. The the just the little detail of when the head intersects that line, that's what makes you conscious in your own photographing. When you go out, you you think of these little things, and it's it's really the sum of the parts. It's all these little critiques that we put together. You know, we say it all the time that we learn from these as much as anybody watching. When we're forced to sit there and look at someone's image with no context, sometimes. I pull out things that, okay, well, this worked and I wouldn't have thought of it, it would if I were taking this picture or this didn't work. So now when I come across that same thing, I'm going to remember, okay, well, I remember, you know, remember this image, it didn't really work. And I think mm -hmm. it is that those little details that really, when you look at an image that is really pleasing, that first museum image, everything just fit together, really, you know, and there's minor little things, but every once in a while you come across an image where everything just fits and it's those yeah. little attention, you know, the little attention to details that really take a good image and elevate it to a great image. And I think that's exactly what's happening here. Um, there is that sort of perfection. Perfection in terms of the composition, the spacing here. There's no overlap. Yeah. The moment, those those legs, those feet, are, the little feet are sort of walking forward into the light. And, you know, again, it's high praise comparing it to this one. Um but, you know, there are th certain things here in terms of the angle that are not quite as perfect as that. But so what, you know, um, and the other sort of big kind of explanation point to to put here is that I, I've seen it before. Again, you know, we've talked about workshops and, and teaching. Um, sometimes people uh, ignore pictures because of little things that they see and that's all they see. They see the negative. And they don't see the forest through the trees or the trees through the snow because there's a lot more good going on than bad. And if you don't choose that image, um, you may be sort of missing uh, one of your strongest images because you're fixated on some negativity, <laughs> which, again, is why these kinds of critiques or you seeking out critique is so important, you know, in your own photography, in your own photographic life. Okay, um, so you know one of the things that I think that a lot of the images that we've seen so far have had in common is that there is a very much a simplicity. Um, I think the images work, you know, on a lot of levels, and in this particular shot here, um, it to me uh, looks like a strong image. Um, it's maybe a little bit more telephoto. Um, I mean, because I have a certain life experience. I think that this shot was in Cuba. Uh, I think it's uh, maybe dancers and it's part of a, a pose situation, but maybe a, an off moment. And it's a little more telephoto than wide angle, uh, but it works. And it also um, highlights the idea that, you know, too much depth of field is not always um, going to help you. It often hurts you because when you look at the out of focus women in this picture, uh, there's nothing unclear except the focus in terms of what their faces are saying and, and doing. And because they're pretty, pretty far from focus compared to the young man, um, they bring the attention to the man first and then you see the women. But, you know, he's obviously the star of this particular image and the light on him is is great. The expression is really interesting and good. Um, and there's a little bit of a, a drama, I think, um, because of the three of them in the picture um, and, you know, maybe the old car. 
So I think it works. I think it works really well. And even in the dark area of his left eye, there's still that kind of highlight um, so that you can see the luminosity of, of the eye itself. Um, I think it works. Yeah. His, his expression, that pop of light where you can see the definition in the right side of his face is definitely the star, the little rim light down onto the neck, the light onto the front. It, it, I mean, it, yeah, it's giving me Cuba lighting workshop, you know, photography workshop where it looks like they were probably working with some super dynamic light here. Um, great moment. It's a little claustrophobic for me. I want a little more breathing room. And I think you make a great point about the out of focus areas. They're a little too defined. It's almost a little too crispy where I would probably, you know, I don't know if, if, if what was done in post. It looks a little crunchy in the sense of maybe dialing back the clarity um, to so that they're a little softer. Um, and I, I think that the more, you know, I, I don't know. I would have framed, maybe framed it just the framing for me. It needs more space. It's nicely mm -hmm. fit in, I guess. But if it were a post situation, I'd want to see, you know, a different, I don't know. There's just something that's not sitting right. It's a, it's, I don't want to take away from it because I think it does have great points. I think that lighting on him and the expression is dynamic, but I want to see more. The crop of it, it's not enough. I need. I want to see more of, of the image, and I feel like if they're going to be so defined while being out of focus, I rather would have seen it shot at like a 35 millimeter length where everything's in focus and it's just, you have the elements. I mean, they there's definitely a look there going on. And I think that's where an environmental portrait shines is when you have everything pretty much in focus, but it's so strategically placed and so well composed that it all works together. Sometimes that's a lot less distracting than when you have a slight telephoto look and what's out of focus should not, it shouldn't dominate or it shouldn't really take your eye. Your eye should really go to him and stay and they should kind of be background players and i feel like you said your eye goes to him and it goes to them because they're in in focus just enough and they're just sharp enough on the edges to to pull your eye he's so dynamic and that expression is the expression you dream of when you're taking portraits yeah he's dreamy no question um <laughs> but you know i th i think that your your point is 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 interesting and well taken in the sense that from a critique perspective I don't think there's anything wrong with this image or, or broken. I think it works on, on you know, all the levels that we spoke about. Yet, if the photographer is listening and if there is more within the frame, uh, see if maybe there is a looser a version of this that isn't distracting that might just work stronger than this one, which works really well. You know, I've come up through photojournalism and, you know, oftentimes when you're you're making beautiful images that get published. Uh, they they sometimes get cropped mainly because you know it it needs to be read, and sometimes the size of the image makes everything a little bit smaller and less impactful. So by cropping, you can make the image more impactful at a smaller size. Here in the, in our critique here, we're talking you know the ideal scenario, and that is let's find the best possible way to communicate with this image and if it needs to be looser in the crop and needs to be enlarged big and framed and put in the museum then fine that's that's what we're going to do that's the way we're looking at this we're not looking at it in any other way we want to use it in a publication or for some other purpose we're, we're thinking of it as art and many times when i look back at earlier work that I was very familiar to me because it was an image that I really loved that was strong. I go back to it and I realize, you know what? <clears throat> a looser composition of that image that I know well is actually stronger. And for whatever reason, I tended to kind of magnify it and enlarge it in a way that still worked, but maybe not as as good as it uh, could. Um, so, you know, that's that's the, the question. Um, but yeah, I think it uh, works really well. Okay, so now, um, you know, here's an example where um, there isn't really um, the kind of uh, selective focus. And by that, I mean, you know, having anything out of focus because everything in this image is sharp. 
So because of that, you know, you're going to be able to kind of look this over, read the menu in the background, as well as see everything from the chair in the foreground to all the characters in this particular image. Um, so let's just talk big picture. I mean, this is a picture of a bunch of young men um, in a situation uh, uh, at a, you know on the streets in some neighborhood with a restaurant in the background. It looks a little higher end, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. Um, but it's a cluster, a gaggle. What do you call that? A gaggle of teens, a gang of boys. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, but uh, these guys uh, don't look dangerous. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, they're all the same age and they're, they're kind of young kind of teens, I guess. Um, and that's what the image is of, and you see them kind of interacting with each other. I think, uh, you know, the most interesting part of the, um, interaction is kind of on, you know, the, maybe this guy on the green, you know, stands out a little bit, his color stands out. It's a little, uh, different from all the kind of bluishness uh, that's outside of the green uh, guy. And, and, and just, you know, purely from a compositional standpoint, if I didn't care to keep the, uh, um, didn't care to keep the aspect ratio, uh, you know, maybe something like this would, would work as well. Um, and I, I think that, you know, this image works, um, but potentially, um, you know, what's happening here in terms of the moment uh, is not necessarily all that compelling. So the image could work, you know, in terms of being an image for a story on sort of young men or whatever <laughs> as an art piece unto its own. Um, you know, we've had a very high bar of what we've seen previously, and, and maybe it's a little bit lacking there. Uh, maybe black and white would, you know, help a little bit just to kind of... Uh, tampen down some of the distractions uh, so you can see this. Uh, but I, I like the moment and I like what's going on. I'll, I'll stop there and I'll, I'll let you chime in. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you went to black and white. You read my mind. Okay. Um, again, I say it all the time. If the color isn't dynamic or it doesn't really like the color for me, just it wasn't wow. So I automatically would look to black and white to see if um, because I don't think it's a bad image. And I think that this is an image that, yes, it's not your wow image but i think this is an image that has historical value this is an image that 20 years from now when these kids are all grown up i think that's cool you know i think it's cool to look back you know there's accounts i follow on instagram there's a, a retro nyc account and most of the images that i look at i'm like wow that's so you know such a cool shot it's just a regular shot on the street from new york from like the 70s or 80s and that's mm -hmm. all it is and at the time i think i said this last week when we were talking it was just a regular shot on the street back when it was taken time adds value and i think that time adds value in this sense now my one little thing that i'll throw in is i always look to the edges your edges are really where for me that's where attention to detail comes in i would pull this into where that just the animals and the little knickknack on the left right and you're still keeping the menu right so mm -hmm. information like this it's always great to have information in an image like this because you have to look at what is the goal of the image? What is the value of the image? This to me, like I said, it's a historical documentation. What does it document? It documents kids at this time. What were they wearing? You know, even just this a day in the life of these random kids that, like I said, 30 years from now might hold some kind of value in some way. Who knows if one of these kids turns out to be the next big music star or athlete or politician or whatever. You have the menu in the background. It lets me know this is Mulberry Street. So now it places a neighborhood and just little detail like that. Does it take away or does it really, you know, keeping that menu in there adds to the image. If I look at balance, the kid on the right side is cut off. So that allows me to say, okay, well, I can pull this in and cut that little stuff off the edge there and keep, I'd probably keep the whole menu in and crop it just to the left of the menu, just so that I know exactly where this is placed historically and I don't have really have a problem with that kid's arm being cropped off because it's way off to the side. Mm -hmm. And if I have something cut off on the right, I feel better about cutting something off of the left because for me, my eye is really going into the center of the frame and kind of just playing around there. I just like to clean up the edges as to try to minimize the distraction. Now, the kid's arm is 
still a little wonky for me, but then it's like, this, these are the decisions you have to make sometimes in photography where do I make it less wonky and crop it in even further? Or do I just keep the image in a cache file as like, okay, it's there. If I ever need it for anything, it's a historical documentation, but there's a lot of times where you have almost the image but almost just isn't enough sometimes. And some there's certain images where it's just like, okay, maybe there was a better moment here to capture, or maybe I could have waited out or composed it a little differently. We don't have to keep everything. Sometimes you need to make the tough decision of, eh, there's just one little thing that I don't like about this image, but it's enough to send it to the cutting room floor. Yeah, I, I like it much more in black and white for sure. Now, Definitely. now it works, and I want to kind of see more. I want to see more of the images. I'm always wanting to see you know, the next frame of what the photographer is showing us. Um, I do feel that, yeah, it's a little bit tough to crop, you know, off the left, just because when you come in, even into the menu, uh, you get this sort of stump of an arm that's a little bit yeah. distracting. It's a little different from the guy on the right. And there's so but much space said, there. There's a lot, there's that space that just makes it stand out. Yeah. The other thing you can do, of course, is you can sort of darken and burn down so it's a little less obvious or you know include a little more maybe there was a little more on that left side yeah um but I, I i love the fact that it's sort of this gang of kids and you know it'd be interesting to put this you know with a similar shot of maybe girls that are captured you know to of, the, of a certain age uh the fact that you know the sociological uh impact of that but but yeah it's 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 uh it's cool i think we've we've set our piece on that one um now here, this one, what the heck am I looking at here? This is sort of a fun image, right? It looks like uh, a woman inside a carriage uh, or a, a stroller. Um, and I sort of looked at it again and tried to figure out, okay, is, are that, is that her head and the kid's arms? But no, I think she's just resting comfortably in here. Um, this is all about the content. You know, I think there's something that we can talk about in terms of the image itself. You know, we talked about depth of field and sharpness and so on. Well, of course, you know, she's sharp, which is great. You want her to be sharp, but so too is the background and the wall and, you know, everything's sharp there. That's okay. It works. Ideally, it would be nice to kind of have more of the focus on her in this. Um, and then, of course, you know, the micro composition, the idea of kind of where her head is in relationship. I would shoot this shot and then maybe move a little to the left, see if I can go down or up just to kind of separate her a little bit more from this. But it's really a, a cool sort of subject. And it's all about the the subject here that makes you kind of want to laugh when you you see the image. Um, and and I think too that, uh, you know, it, it works in black and white. It's all about the content. And and, you know, th there are ways that we can make things a little bit stronger. And it's a little weird because, you know, you look at her foot. It looks like a kid's foot. She, I guess she's not very big to be in the stroller. Um, and then, you know, the the straightening of the wall. Do you want to straighten that wall maybe a little bit without cutting off her, her foot? Does that help a little bit? Maybe. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice little kind of found moment. And it might go away. And maybe it did after the photographer took this picture. Yeah. And, and I look at Im uh, images or moments like these rather. Um, these are moments. Like you said, it's a great found moment. And if you're able to capture it and you have your camera on you or whatever, your phone, it's it's a bonus and it's a win. I I tend to not judge these as harshly because it really is about the moment. And you can tell this was, I mean, this gives me the vibe of somebody who saw this moment. It was like, oh, that's super funny or cool. or And they just snapped it and at that point get the shot it doesn't matter how much attention is paid to composition and light and framing and all of this if you have the camera and you're out taking photos this to me gives like i'm out with my family i don't have my camera on me but i see something in the moment a great found moment as you said and just want to get the shot yeah and the message too is you know get it and then make it better by working it when possible because you got to get it because maybe it'll go away. Maybe she looked at you and, hey, no, whatever. All right, that was the last shot you're going to get of this. But sometimes you get it, and then you move slightly, get it again, get it again, move it, you know. And and then you can make it even stronger than than, than it is. And, you know, that's always a, a good idea. Um, well, I have a soft spot, I think, for this image because 
I haven't been to my hometown of Montreal in a very long time, but I think that this is a photograph uh, in Montreal. I recognize the color of the metro or the subway system there. And, uh, you know, it makes me sort of long to to sort of go back. Um, this image, there's a lot going on. There's the the architecture and geography. Actually, I definitely know it's Lionel Gru. That's a station. So it definitely is uh, uh, Montreal. Um, the color, it's a little kind of greenish and so on. I think there's something, you know, you can always enhance it in a, in a very personal way, in a way that you like it. Um, you know, we can cut out that color entirely, just get a sense of what the image is. There's a lot happening on the top level. There's nothing happening on the bottom level. Um, and I think from a compositional standpoint, that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, potentially you can also look at this image and say that, uh, you know, the, the sort of still life aspect of it can be interesting as well. Not that I'm advocating that kind of a crop, um, but maybe, um, you know, partly too is the fact that it looks like it was photographed at um, a slow shutter speed, one eighth of a second. And, and, and that's relatively slow and you're testing the limits. So a lot of our image stabilization lets us go even lower. But, you know, in some ways, uh, a little bit of a tripod or one of those handheld things uh, so that you can even a slower shutter speed. So these people kind of become just this ghostly um, uh, uh, human factor, but you're not really seeing them so so close. I think that could make it work. Maybe a little bit pulled back a little, maybe a little more of the foundation at the bottom part of the frame. And then, you know, it's all the chess pieces and we can't control it. But if you wait, as more people sort of walk through this section of the image, maybe that can make it better. Um, but, you know, I think it works on a lot of levels. Is it necessarily the five-star image that potentially can come from this? Maybe not. Um, but I think it works on some levels. So I'll let you talk. Yeah, about definitely. I, I do like the color that it has going on because it does have color and the color is kind of harmonious. I think it does need treatment to it where yeah it does have this like overall yellowish greenish cast especially in that cement and this is where i would do maybe like a more localized adjustment or go into yeah like see even something like that and you know i would probably go in and pull out and desaturate the greens completely you know go into the color mixer and pull out the green and, and pull that down to really just make it because it does have you have complementary colors here you have the blue and the orange and that splash of yellow which i think work very well together and something like this, and, and again, we should be looking at our images as what is the best way to treat our images? What is the best way to for our images to be seen? I love how you pointed out what's going on downstairs versus upstairs. And I, I think this would even make like a split image, like a cool diptych, where you crop it right down the center and you have these two very narrow, more cinematic framings, but, you know, do it as two separate prints and like i can see these you know you could take it take something where it's like yeah you look at it as as an image and you post this online and it might just be like okay yeah just a whatever shot of the metro station but then you print this out you you know you give it the proper pro, pop, proper post processing you print it out as two separate images you know cropped right down the center two prints space them out a little bit frame them and now you have a kind of cool diptych of the same station but you've taken one image and split it into two Again, I'm going very drastically in the way of, uh, you know, where can we go with this image? But it's just to show you that as you often demonstrate with pairing images, Steve, you can take five mediocre images and make a one really strong group of images. And I think we can take an image that's like, okay, there's nothing really here that makes this image jump out as a, as a shining image. But are we really squeezing every ounce of juice out of our images. Yeah, you could take uh, a series of images shot in the Metro in Montreal and combine them together because the math doesn't add up the way normal math does. Sometimes two images together, you know, take on an exponential power. And, and that's the beauty. And that's the next level of sort of looking at your images, not just as singles, but as a body of work. And the creating the narrative in a diptych or three images or a hundred images, you, you have the power to kind of um, exponentially uh, create a communication that 
you know, is much stronger together. So um, mm. I see we're, we're sort of heading uh, to the end here. Should we do one last one? Or yeah. Two, maybe two I mean, more? We'll, yeah, there maybe we go. two more. You know, these are <clears throat> kind of related <clears throat> in the sense that, uh, you know, they have to do with uh, vehicles that take you into the air. Have you ever done anything like this, Derek? No, I need to. It's on my list. Okay. Yeah, I've been up in a hot air balloon, but I've never done uh, whatever they're doing on the right side there. Um, so let's start with this one. Um, I think it's a very strong moment. It's a very strong uh, image. I think the light is is beautiful. Oftentimes, these hot air balloon scenarios happen at a beautiful time of the day, usually sort of early morning or late in the day. And you can feel that there. But you can also kind of feel the heat and the moment of the the fire sort of going in there. And then there's the sort of peak uh, situation here of this gentleman um, holding down the balloon so that they can inflate it, I guess, with helium. Um, and it's really nice. And then the beautiful light that's shining on him uh, really works. I think the color definitely works on this image. It's all about the yellow. I think the photographer did uh, very well in terms of composing. Here it's a little bit complicated and potentially distracting, but was able to kind of keep his head above the pole here. You got this guy there in the hand, but I think it was um, rather well done. And, you know, it's about the moment. It's about the subject matter. I think it works. Yeah, the framing is super nice on this. There is enough environment in the background. The moment itself is framed. Even the way... I'm big on shapes and geometry, the way that the, you have the diagonal of the mat cutting into that dead space in the bottom, the foot is framed right in there. It's like everything is just perfect. There's a lot of gesture in here that I like. Everything came together. The photographer, they understood the assignment as far as composition is concerned. And this is a perfect example of how spot on composition and framing lets so much, you, you don't look at the, you know, you're, you're less bound to nitpick an image if it compositionally is there and it just feels right as a whole and then there's this one wow these guys uh, up in the sky i think that um in some ways the kind of intensity of the color is quite beautiful um but perhaps might be um hiding a little bit of uh the 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 fact that these guys are like really up in the sky so um, I'm just going to hit the auto key, see what happens. Maybe that's not really what I want to happen. Um, but there are ways that you can come in and, and uh, you know, I'm going to desaturate a little bit. I mean, just for, for giggles, I'll, I'll put it into black and white. Um, and it's the kind of an image that maybe you want to see uh, larger so that you can see that these little guys are up in the sky. Um, I think this is where the strength of the image, you've got these two parachutes, two people, both looking in different directions. I think compositionally it works. I think it works really well in black and white. Uh, I did find the color treatment a little bit overpowering. Um, so it's somewhat of a relief to see it in black and white. And you can see the, the strength and the bones of the image really working in the composition when you look at it in black and white. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. I think the color was, you know, it just, it didn't really it made it more of this makes it more of an pleasing image to look at. I think the color for me was just too, too punchy, not to say that it was anything. And that's, I don't think that's the photographer's fault. It's just, you're looking no. at the sky, you're looking at the colors you're at the mercy of what colors the, the balloons are. I think this makes it a nice moment. Um, I'd like to see it with more breathing room. I, I get the feeling that this was probably a zoom that was cropped in tighter to, make them bigger in the frame but i would want to see a little breathing room maybe i would like it maybe i wouldn't but i think framing wise it's nice they kind of split the frame up between the two you have the one dominant there and and just the difference in perspective and distance between them is, is cool the um the micro composition of the guy on the right kind of between clouds he's on a darker area um yeah i think it works it's a nice frame well, you know, there was so much great stuff that we saw here today that I've learned from. Hopefully you guys have uh, got some stuff that maybe you can use in your own work. Can't believe we're, you know, toward the end. I know we normally like to thank Lassie for, for sponsoring this and 
occasionally Derek lets me sneak in a little self promotion. Always, uh, always. Educate.com. I've got a great workshop, guys. It's very expensive, but Japan is very expensive. We're putting together a photo book in one week in Tokyo, the end of March, and we still have a space available. So if anyone's interested, check out photoeducate.com. You can reach out to me from the site, and I'm happy to. Derek, you should take some of the millions that you have and come with us to Tokyo. Let me, uh, just, let me reach in my pockets here. I would love one, <laughs> one day. It's It's a dream, but you know what? It goes back. To what I was saying earlier, you have to invest in yourself. Yeah, no, no question. Um, you know, that's that's that's. I mean, look, you know, the the journey is the destination. No question when it comes to photography. Just looking for the stop share button, which I've kind of lost. Um, and and yeah, investing in yourself. There we go. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, you know, look, we love photography. Photography is amazing. And the more you do it, the better you get. That's just, that's just going to happen. And with Damn. a little bit of guidance from those around you, from us and from everybody else out there, or the tremendous depth of knowledge you can get just looking at the B&H event space, that's your doctor degree in photography with all the great stuff that's available to you to put out there free from B&H. Thank you. Um, yeah, there are no limits to where you can take it. Free. You said the magic word, free. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and look, this is why we do this. I think it's great to foster a community and also a comfortable space for people to get honest critiques about their work. I've never been the yes type. I think I learned from I got I got my behind ripped to shreds when I would go into critiques. And my mentor was very, very, very um brutal with me not to say you have to go that far but i think it does help to see different perspectives and at least open your eyes to hey take it with a grain of salt maybe it's going to work maybe it's not but try it work your scenes work your angles try different things try to push yourself outside your comfort zone and always be learning we should always be be students of the game because we're changing as people the way we see the world is affecting the photos we take and and the type of stuff that we're experiencing should always be documented. And I think it's like you said, the the destination is the the journey, or the journey is the destination. Um, yeah, another great session. Yeah. They keep raising yeah. the bar. <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. Uh, thank you guys for sending in stuff. We got a lot of new stuff. There's still a bit of a backlog of stuff that we will get to, but keep sending it in. Keep watching it. And, uh, you know, we will get to, if we haven't seen your, your photo, um, uh, you know, complain to Derek, uh, you have his home address. You can, uh, <laughs> go, go we, we have Steve on an open-ended contract that he's locked into and we, he's forced to come on here until you guys send the final image. So just keep sending images. And that's right. It's a court ordered situation, <laughs> but I'm happy to community comply. service. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Well, Steve, thank you as always. Of course, a huge thank you to Lucy for supporting this kind of free content. If you guys have not checked out our YouTube channel, head over to YouTube. We're over there at BH Event Space, and you can see this with all of our other free live recorded content that lives there. Nothing better than evergreen content. So until next time, keep sending your images in, and we will welcome Steve back for another round of the Passionate Photographer Critiques. Catch you all next time. Bye, everybody. Good shooting. <laughs>